Welcome back to Crew YouTube. I'm so happy to be here and happy to see you guys back for a whole new year of lessons and activities and just a whole bunch of new things that we're about to get ready to do. Yeah, we're in a new space, new vibe, and I hope you guys will be able to come and introduce yourselves to us when this does actually open up for everyone. So right now, I want you guys to understand something for this fourth week of vibes. And I want to kind of title this with you guys as guilt, you're not the boss of me. You are not the boss of me. So we're going to go ahead and talk about this. What would you do if you could do anything in this world and there wouldn't be no consequences and you wouldn't get in trouble for it? Yeah, go ahead and ask your friends that are next to you, your parents, go ahead, go ahead and tell them. I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Keep that to yourself, keep that to yourself. Good thing there's nobody around that can read your mind, right? But the thing that you're thinking about, the reason why you can say that is because you have wild thoughts. Everyone has wild thoughts. And the reason why I say that we all have wild thoughts is because we have this thing that is in us that makes us feel guilty. And that's why I want you guys to understand guilt is not the boss of you. So let's talk about it real quick. In the last previous weeks, we've been talking about emotions, right? Emotions can really change our mood, our behavior, the way we think, and the way that we treat ourselves and other people around us. And I want us to focus on that real quick. Because we have King Solomon. And this is the first verse we're gonna break down. It's Proverbs chapter four, verse 23. Again, Proverbs chapter four, verse 23. It says this, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So, so Fonzo, what does that mean? What do you mean when, when King Solomon says this? Notice that he says, guard your heart. He's basically telling you that your emotions, the way that you think and operate, comes from your heart first and then it comes out. Have you ever wondered why when you, when you go ahead, like for example, when you go and buy food, outside food, and you know, you know your mom is making a dish at home, but yet you still go ahead and get it, right? Now, when you get home, you kind of feel kind of guilty. Like, dang, mom made this food and I, I already ate out and I'm already full. Now she's going to think I'm ungrateful. That is called false guilt. When you do something, when you kind of know that you're not supposed to do it, but you still do it anyways, that's what you call false guilt. But there's another term that we kind of all associate ourselves with when it comes to guilt. And I'll give you a perfect example with that. That example is basically you're doing something and you intentionally do it no matter the consequences, no matter the, the, the thing that you take away from that person. Like for example, I remember when I was going to school in high school and I remember my, my, my school teacher always had these smelly mark, markers and they smelled so good. And I'm like, man, I want that great marker. Like I have to have my hands on it. So I remember there was an opportunity where her back was turned. I'm like, oh, this is my time to get this marker and go. I didn't care if I was gonna get caught. I didn't care if anyone else around me is gonna see me. I wanted it that bad. So I ended up getting it. And that was one of my um, teacher's favorite markers. And every time I'd go to that class, it kind of reflected in my mind like, dang, I kind of feel bad for taking this from her. She's the one that bought it. I didn't buy it, but yet I'm the one that took it from her. So I'm taking a piece of something that I don't deserve. And now I'm feeling kind of, dang, I should never did it. I owe her one. Like I have to do this for her. I have to go and do extra work for her. I have to help her out around the classroom for her because I'm feeling guilty. And this is what I want you guys to understand about actual guilt. We feel like, dang, I did it, but I'm not the only one that did it. I'm not the only one that feels like this. It happens to the best of us. This is the, the, the conversation that we have when we do something that we're not supposed to do and it kind of triggers that, man, I'm gonna do it again. Or man, I don't care, it's guilt, whatever. But we all have that feeling and King Solomon is talking about that heart. So we're gonna dive in a little deeper. When we, when we do this thing called guilt and feel guilty because of it, we have this conscious talk with ourselves where it's, I owe you one. It's kind of like the debt versus the debtor. You do something and you have to do something in return. Because you did this to someone else, now you kind of feel bad. Now you want to do extra stuff towards them because you kind of feel like you took something out of them. Maybe you took your reputation from your friend. 
Maybe it's the trust that you took from them. Maybe it's self-esteem. Yeah, I know, I know, I know probably the person next to you, not you, but the person next to you kind of feel what I'm feeling, what I did, because we all have that guilt mindset. And we want to talk about when we do it and we apologize. When you apologize, when you do something wrong, you get that moment of, man, I feel good. That weight is off my shoulders. And that's when you know you've done something that you weren't supposed to do. That's when you know I'm guilty of doing something and I want to apologize. I feel like I have to do it. So we're going to get into it real quick. The truth is we are all guilty of something. Whether you're black, white, Spanish, Japanese, any culture, we have all dealt with being guilty of something. And that's the thing that God wants us to understand. And I want to break this down with Paul. He's, a, he's, a, he's the greatest example because before he was Paul, he was Saul of Tetris. And what he was doing basically before he knew Christ, before he knew Jesus, before he knew um, the, our Savior, he was the person that was persecuting people that believed in Jesus Christ. He literally went ahead and tried to get them arrested. They got him tortured. Like he went ahead and did it out of his way to get people that are believers of Christ to get persecuted and killed. That was his main mission. But you know what was crazy about Saul? He changed his life. He faced the truth. He understood that, hey, this is not right with God. I'm gonna face my guilt. So then he changed his name to Paul, which we all know. And he, he not only spoke about Jesus Christ, but he also talked about his past. And could you imagine you being someone that you know, hey, that's not Paul, that's Saul. He's the one that persecuted my mom and dad for believing in Christ. And you would think, man, how could he even walk in this world knowing that he got someone killed because they believed in Christ? But the thing about Paul is the fact that he walked with it. He wasn't ashamed of it. He didn't make his guilt, his past, his future. He realized, I'm gonna atone for it. I'm gonna let everyone know that I am a person that did these things but yet I'm gonna teach you guys how to walk differently. And I want you guys to understand this verse that Paul talks about here. It says here, um, Romans chapter eight, verse one through two. Romans chapter eight, verse one through two. It says here, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Okay, Fonzo, what, what does that mean? What is Paul talking about when he talks about the spirit and, and that we're set free from laws of sin? So what, what he's saying is basically, just because you do something in this world and you feel guilty about it, don't mean you have to be ashamed about it because God has died for us. He has literally went onto the cross for all the wrongs that we've done. He, he faced death in its eyes. He faced guilt in its eyes and said, you will bow down. And when, when, when Jesus bowed, bowed to, the, to, the, to the death and made sure like, hey, I'm gonna rise from this, he's showing a blueprint for guilt. He's showing a blueprint for death, like you will not stop me. And he thought about you when, when you're doing things that you know you're not supposed to do. And Jesus understand this, and then Paul said this as well. He said, for, for what the laws were powerless to do because of weakness by the flesh. So this correlates the laws, your flesh, the way that you think, all combines to how you feel emotions and how you operate. And that's the thing that Jesus is trying to teach not only you and I, but Paul as well is, yeah, you might have done all these things that you know you're not supposed to do, but if you face it, if you look it in its eyes and, and ask God for forgiveness and you talk about it with others and you apologize and you find ways to make things better, then God will understand and, and he'll help you through it. And, um, um, and the thing about it is, I want you guys to understand that guilt is not your boss. Guilt is not your boss. And Jesus even shows us that because of Jesus, guilt is not your boss. Because of Jesus died for us and understood that hey, you are my child, I will help you out. He made sure that guilt cannot have power over you. So I want you guys to get this verse right here. Romans chapter eight, verse three through four. And so he, and he is God, 
condemn sin in the flesh in order that the righteous require of the law might be fully met in us who did not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So oftentimes we do things because of impulse, because man, I want this. Just like when I said previously about the marker, I wanted it. I wasn't thinking about my teacher at that time. I wasn't really concerned about how she would feel. But when God died for us, he made sure that if I'm dying for you, you gotta understand that you have to control your flesh because your flesh will do things and say things that they don't truly mean. And that's what Jesus is trying to let us know. And then Paul continues to say this, God has made the relationship between you and him as important as anyone else. So we gotta understand that God is perfect. He, 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 he has no blemishes. He came to this world guilt-free. He, he doesn't know any sin, but yet he died for all of our sins. So that's the beauty about being a servant of God, right? And I want you guys to take away four things. The first thing is, you are no longer allowed to condemn yourself or punish yourself. Get up, guilt is not the boss of you. You don't have to go in and bow down to guilt because you feel overwhelmed or you feel depressed or you feel, man, I can't do this no more because of how I'm feeling. It's not your boss. Give it to, give it to the Lord, give it to God because he knows and sees all things. The second thing is your guilt will remain with you, but it will not define you. It will remain in you, but it will not define you. So when you walk in this world and you realize you've made mistakes, you realize you, you, you based everything on emotion and you've corrupted a lot of relationships, you gotta understand that you're not your past. You are not your guilt. So you gotta kinda conversate with yourself and speak to yourself like, hey, there's a better me inside of me. The third thing, you do not get to condemn others of your mistake. The reason why I say this is because God has died for all of us. There's no one that he exempt. We are all under his umbrella of love. So you gotta understand that you can't pass blame on other people and think that they're gonna feel, oh, you're not guilty either. No, we're all a, a part of that guilt phase, but God died for us, not just for yourself, right? And the last thing, you are free to make things right with the person you hurt without excuses or expectations of getting something out of it. So what I'm saying is take this moment, sit back and think, what am I doing right now that is causing others to feel low? What am I doing right now to make people feel guilty of? What am I doing to myself that makes me feel less of a person? Think about that and apologize not only to yourself, but the people that you've hurt around you. Because those are the people that support you and love you. You don't wanna tear them down. And that's week four, the vibes. <laughs> Guilt is not the boss of you. And I hope to see you guys again. Thank you.